We all love the sound of money, and a $1,500 sign-on bonus sounds even better. That's right, Belicio Foods of Jackson is offering a $1,500 sign-on bonus to new employees. Receive an extra $100 your first six weeks, then $400 after day 90, and $500 after day 180. Don't wait. Apply online at BelicioFoods.com slash careers today. That's BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Come work for a company who truly values their employees. Come work for Belicio Foods. Well, happy morning, everyone, and it is Monday, and welcome to the beginning of your work week. Of course, Jennifer here to start off the morning show on Main Street TV with our good friend Pete Wilson, and the morning news update, of course, brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty, and if you have any real estate needs, give Nia a call, 740-418-5, what is it, 4135? Yeah, that's right. 4135, I couldn't spit that out. Give her a call, and she will help you out with any of your real estate needs or questions. It wasn't on the teleprompter, I understand. I know. I think our teleprompter broke. Um, Yeah, where is it? Technically, it is. Actually, there is. Technically, yes. Shut up, James. (laughs) Now he's making me feel really bad because it's right in front of my face, and I still couldn't say it. James. It is, it, is, Monday, it is guys. Monday morning. Monday. <laughs> it is Monday morning. Um, but no, um, so man, um, lots going on and kind of an eventful evening last night in the city of Jackson, which, so Jamie and I were out of town. We had to go to Columbus and work a beer festival over the weekend. And so I get this message from the sheriff and it's like, you know, those one of those messages and it's like, Broadway or Portsmouth Street is closed from Sycamore to South, and I'm like Sycamore, Sycamore. Yeah, what in the heck could be going Sycamore on to, to cause that? Sy- right? It took me a minute to realize what Sycamore was, and then I remember from you know when I used to walk to school that it was Sycamore. So I'm like, so what on earth could be happening? I said, oh my gosh, I hope nothing happened to Cardo's. <laughs> but close to Cardo's, it was close to Cardo's, and there was. Um, Kind of a strange uh, event that occurred last night. Right. And I tell you what happened was a pickup truck slammed into a car that was on a uh, on the driveway in front of a small office building at 36 Portsmouth Holy Street. Moly. And that was the result. Uh, that pickup wow. truck not only hit the corner of that office building, it ran all the way through. There is a wider view to show you. But, uh, you know, if you're familiar with Jackson, you can kind of know where we're talking about yeah. uh, just about three houses down from the intersection the south street intersection and uh it was a sight to behold all i knew was that there was something going on in that block so i was at the office i drove over there and when i got over there i mean it was a gasping awe-inspiring yeah. type sight i in mean a, that's in not a horrible just a little way. thing that's... in a horrible way yeah. fire truck ems plenty of police officers of course and, of course, our own multimedia journalist, Jeremiah Shaver, had beat me to the scene. He was already there doing some video and some initial reporting. Sure. And as we speak, he is at the scene, post-scene, of course, this morning. Yeah. A lot of work had been done there, uh, you know, to do some cleanup and restoration. So before we talk about the details of what's happening there, and we do know the story of what happened okay. and what the police are reporting at this time. That's scary. Let's, let's go to Jeremiah at the scene uh, to show what's going on this morning. Okay. Hey, Jeremiah. Hey, morning, Jen and Pete. Um, so I'm out here live along Portsmouth Street. Uh, behind me, you can see the building that Pete was talking to. I'm going to step out of the frame here so you guys can see what's going on this morning. Uh, crews have been out here since early uh, working to shore up the building and clean up the debris following the uh, collision just after 6 o'clock yesterday evening, and that was Sunday um, June 12th, um, as you can see right now, crews are uh, busy working up, uh, cleaning up the bricks and the debris uh, left after the truck struck the back portion uh, of this office building here. Uh, you can see they've got some, uh, they got several beams installed to sure up this end of the building and uh, everything is uh, getting cleaned up out here. Wow, and it looks as if, um, is that the car that was hit, Jeremiah? It looks like they're putting on a tow yes. truck. 
Yeah, so over here you can see uh, a oh, car, no. the car that was in the drive that got hit by the truck. Um, they're getting it loaded this morning, it looks like. Uh, that's Angle's garage is out here uh, loading it on a rollback as we speak. Man, and I can tell you that um, from the pictures, and I have not seen the actual scene. I know Pete has, so he can probably speak more to this, or you can, but... Um, that wasn't just a little like bump on the side of that building. It looks like it took out the entire corner of it. It did. It was yeah, a, the, yeah, it, the whole front of the holy structure. Holy moly! Right, that that brick. I mean, it's here. it's just what it appears to be. It's a brick building, so you know it's not a wood frame building or or plastic siding right. or, anything, or metal siding. This is bricks right in front all the way through, and a lot of times, you know, you see these crashes. And uh, you see heavy damage on the outside and debris on the inside. The front of this truck went all the way through uh, the corner of this building. Scary. My especially goodness. Especially considering that there was a person inside at the time. No. Exactly. So, um, but anyway, Jeremiah, uh, at the scene, we appreciate what you did last night. We got some video. Uh, just as it, just after it happened. Uh, wow. 17 minutes or so. You God, can, it just gets worse from every angle, Pete. <laughs> Jeremiah. Right. You oh my can, gosh. It was it was one of the worst I've seen, and I've seen some yeah. uh, over the years. And so uh, the wonderful thing about it was, uh, you know, the young lady inside was not injured. The pickup truck driver uh, was injured and was taken to Grant Medical Center. His injuries are not believed to be real serious, but nonetheless, he was hurt. Look at that truck. Right, you can see how badly wow. damaged it is. Obviously, a, a total job, as they would say, demolished. And Jeremiah, since you were there on the scene, I can see right there over to the right, it looks as if the other corner of the building is damaged as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's right. Um, it looks like it also, if I step out of the frame here, you can see... Right here, it yeah. also struck here, and then it went on to strike strike over here, and then there was also a car here in the drive that it struck as well. I'm trying to figure out how you hit there and then hit there, but I'm sure it was just you know an accident and that's how it happened. But wow! Right, and there are two different offices there. Even though that's on a residential street surrounded by houses, it was an office building. Uh, we do understand that they're in the upstairs, as you can see there in the in the photo. That apparently is an apartment where somebody was living. Oh, uh, or was at least. Well, <laughs> uh, but uh, but on was. the bottom, uh, on the left hand side, where the truck hit, a uh, young lady was running a rainbow vacuum cleaner business out of there. Oh my! And the other side uh, is a, is a uh, is, is a different office. Uh, uh, office building, that office space that is rented out there, as well as that upstairs okay. apartment, even though it's surrounded by houses. Man, that um, super unfortunate situation, but could have been much worse. It really, really could have been. Now, we're, we'll go ahead and give you some details uh, of that mm -hmm. crash, and we thank the Jackson Police Department for working with us uh, at, the, at the scene. Uh, you know, they let us uh, do our jobs there. Sure. Uh, we appreciate that. Immediately after I was able to talk to the officer down at the police department who's in charge, and they pretty much were able to release everything. Okay. Uh, but what happened was this was called in at 6.01 p.m. Uh, and police officers arrived uh, here at the scene uh, to find that pickup truck uh, halfway through the building. Uh, the blue car, the blue compact car, heavily damaged that it had hit first before it hit the building. And... Uh, they also saw a male sitting on the ground outside the truck with obvious injuries to his head, I believe in the form of like cuts and scrapes and like that. He I'd was, say so. All right. And they also noticed an odor of alcohol at the scene. And inside the truck was a uh, partially, uh, partially full can of beer on the driver's side floorboard. Okay. okay. They, the driver has been identified as Ernie L. Tisdale, age 44. Now, he lives at 103 Portsmouth Street, and that is right on that same block. And oh. they believe that Mr. Tisdale, uh, he was driving on Portsmouth Street away from Cardo's towards town. That would be, I believe, um, believe that would be north. 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 Yeah. And uh, he just uh, 
passed out, ran off the road, obviously with some uh, speed to be able uh, to, yeah. to, for, for this type of damage to occur, hitting the car and then uh, making its way all the way through the corner of that building. Uh, he was at the scene, fully conscious and all, and according to the police, and this is reported in the news report that we now have on our website, it was reported uh, he admitted to uh, having a couple beers, and of course there was another one that was inside the truck at the time. He admitted that he was uh, intoxicated. They did what they call a a, per, a uh, preliminary breath test at the scene. Mm-hmm. This is not something that they usually use in court. They can. They usually try to get you know a blood or urine sample mm-hmm. to be more uh, exact and defining. Uh, That test has not come back, but on the PBT, as they use the shorthand uh, word for that uh, test they do on the scene, he blew what a 0.154, and the legal uh, level for impairment, alcohol Uh alcohol or drug abuse impairment uh, in Ohio is 0.8, so that is almost twice the level. 0.08. 0.08. Yeah. 0.08 versus 0.154, which so is almost double. Right. Almost yeah. almost double. Now, uh, he was taken to Hoser Medical Center Jackson Hospital for treatment of his injuries. And his injury that was probably actually surely more serious than the uh, cuts and scrapes on his forehead, and I'm not sure how bad they were, but they were noticeable, was that the police say that he may have had a fractured sternum because of the airbag deployment. Uh-huh. Now, you know, they, you know, they're there to try to protect you when you have that jolt. And sometimes, you know, they can deliver a blow of their own. Sure. And so they flew him to Grant Medical Center in Columbus for treatment of the of, of his injuries, including the fractured sternum or possibly gotcha. fractured sternum. Okay. He has been charged with OVI and failure to control. They will look for the results of the urine test that was taken at the hospital Mm -hmm. uh, to confirm their preliminary charge. Uh, Now, the sidebar story to this is at the time that this occurred, a young lady named Miko Christian, uh, she went to Jackson High School, played on the softball team. Some Mm -hmm. people know her through that. Um, she was inside the building. She is a, she is associated with a rainbow vacuum cleaner business and okay. she or others rent that space. And that was where she was working when this occurred. Uh, she was standing in, it was a fairly small room. She was standing in a room, but not at, at, at the location where the truck came through. Thank God. She was not hit by the truck. She apparently was not hit with any flying debris. Uh, she might have had the life scared out of her. And you I'd imagine say, what that would be like. Uh, yeah. You know, especially if you don't see it coming and you're looking the other way or whatever. And uh, But she is okay. We saw her at the scene. Uh, the scary thing about it is, if, if it wasn't scary enough to experience it, is that she has a toddler child who often accompanies her. And that child could have been in the building on many nights when oh, she was working, goodness. but was not on this particular night. Thank goodness. So anyway, that was what we have. Uh, we do have, uh, we talked about it on the radio this morning. Of course, we'll have a, a news story on our, our new newscast on, the, on our uh, radio stations that do news. Uh, we also have a complete story on the website with a photo. We're going to maybe build on that story, add to it, obviously add more photos on the Telegram uh, uh, Facebook page now. Uh, we do have uh, some video and other photos that were taken at the scene last night. So we will follow this story, but yeah. we think we pretty much have it covered. Yeah. And thank you, Jeremiah, for being out on the scene. And uh, we appreciate you so much. Um, always bringing us the latest and greatest on on what's going out in the world, because that that is definitely a wild one. We started seeing pictures last night pop up of that. I mean, and what I'm seeing today is way worse. It, it, like the angles I saw last night didn't do that justice. That's horrible. Right. They they jumped right on it. Uh, you know, whoever yeah. was the building owner or whoever's getting that uh, cleaned up. Is there uh, any indication as to who the business or building owner is? Well, we've heard unofficially who it was. We've not been able. I've okay. not been able to confirm that. Don't you love getting that phone call? Right. Hey, by the way, there's a ginormous Dodge Ram pickup truck sitting in the middle of your building right now. Okay. Yeah, and, and that would not be hyperbole. That was no. <laughs> exactly the truth. We're not saying yes, literally. Jeremiah, is there anything to add to uh, what you what we've talked about here today? 
No, I think you guys covered it all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take it back to the studio to you guys, and I'll be in here shortly. I covered over the weekend. All right. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. And we'll see you here in a few minutes. Be careful. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ironically, uh, of course, you know, being the business that we're in, the profession that we're in, uh, you know, there's things going on all the time and we try yeah. to keep up with them. Ironically, uh, Jeremiah's assignment over the weekend was to attend a car show. <laughs> <laughs> so he saw, well. he saw vehicles on both days. <laughs> he saw and both aspects of that spectrum. Yes. Right. Exactly. Okay, well, one of the things that we want to talk about, we're going to go to one of the nice things that occurred this weekend. Yeah. And uh, to the aficionados, to the fans, this was a big deal in Vinton County on Saturday. The Southern Ohio Forest Rally took place. And okay. And it's a three-day deal that starts in Ross County, goes into Portsmouth, uh, Portsmouth and Scioto County uh, on Friday, then ends Saturday in Vinton County. Uh, it's called the Southern Ohio Forest Rally, and it's on the circuit of of uh, this specialized racing that takes place. And this has become, the Southern Ohio Forest Rally has become one of the best known in the country of these forest road races that take place. That's uh, cool. Because we have lots of state forests in yeah, Southern Ohio. The Tar sense. Hollow State for Forest over in Ross County. And, of course, the Zaleski State Forest uh, in uh, Vinton County. Right. We're showing you some scenes now, uh, if you're watching there on Facebook. Uh, this was uh, the Parquet Ex Expose. I may have said that wrong. It's French. But it's basically, <laughs> it's a car show downtown oh. in MacArthur where it gives uh, visitors, um, local and, and from outside Vinton County alike, a chance to see up close the race cars. Uh, before, that they, is before, neat. before they race on that, that particular uh, section of the race in Vinton County. Yeah. And uh, also at that event was a, a very famous person, um, very famous uh, in X Games and as a stunt performer. Uh, his name is Travis Pastrana. And there he is uh, yeah. doing an autograph with one of his young fans there. And uh, this guy is in, on, the, on the racing stunt performer X, X Games uh, front, he is extremely well-known, a celebrity. Yeah, and does some he, crazy stuff. And a lot of people came out to see him and were attracted to him awesome. uh, in MacArthur when they had this event. That was at, late in the afternoon before they did the Vinton County stage, which was held in the afternoon. And uh, our Red Thompson Jr. was up to cover a couple things in Vinton County, including the big summer fest, you know, we talked about with the football yes. program. That was going on at the same time. Uh, and Red... Uh, was able to capture uh, a short interview with uh, Travis Pastrano. And uh, if James yeah, can is... I, can I add a little footnote to this, Pete? Yeah, sure. So Rodney Tomlin comes in uh, Friday afternoon, and he is so excited. He's like, you guys, this is a big deal. I'm going to go down there. I'm going to get an interview with Travis Pastrana. This is, this, this is awesome. This is going to be great. Who got the interview with Travis Pastrana? Not Rodney. Red, Red Thompson. Thompson. Of course he did. Right, and we're going to play that for you right now. Thanks. Okay, we're here with uh, Travis Pastrana, and he is a award-renowned racer. And first of all, can you tell us about your career and and also what it was like to be a NASCAR driver? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a brief foray in uh, NASCAR, but no, it's been awesome. Really started out as motorcycles, X Games, action sports. Uh, we had a show on MTV for a while with uh, Giant Knoxville and that crew. Um, been a fun ride, but right now, rally, uh, we get to drive these Subarus, full chat through some amazing forests, and great to be here in Ohio. And could you tell us uh, um, a little bit about the Forest Rally, how long you've been connected with it, and uh, what are your plans for the future? And Southern Ohio Forest Rally is probably the best roads in all of American Rally. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I've only been here since uh, 2020, uh, when it became a national championship round. But definitely hope to come here for uh, for years to come. Amazing roads. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, I, we, I can't disagree with him about that. Right. Well, we appreciate Red be, uh, being able to, to yeah. snag an interview Thanks, there. Thanks, Red. Great uh, job. But he is uh, read his uh, biography there. Uh, he uh, has uh, made a name for himself uh, in X Games as a stunt performer. He was in NASCAR for a short time. Supercross, motocross, freestyle motocross, and rally racing, he has done it all. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm not a, a big racing guy. I got to be careful. If I talk too much, I'll show my ignorance. 
but rally <laughs> racing was what was going on with the Southern Ohio Forest Rally. It was yes. that type of race. Super it's cool. a circuit, you know, that travels around. They go to different places. I think they uh, points are accumulated and so forth. Yeah. But uh, the winners of the Vinton County stage or the overall race, um, they were uh, recognized as well. And it's a team. It's two drivers uh, that are on these teams, Ken Block and Alex Garson, Garson Mamino. Gar, Samamino, you don't have that one. Yeah, That's those not guys. Welsh. That's not Welsh. No, definitely. Right. Well, there they are right there uh, with the big plaques they received at Vinton County High School when it was all over. That's awesome. For winning the winning the overall race there in, in Southern Ohio, the SOFR, or at least the Vinton County stage. I believe it was the overall race. Ken Block's a pretty big celebrity in that world, too. Okay. All right. We'll see. James knows. James knows. Right, exactly. All right, so uh, the the sidebar story to the Southern Ohio Forest Rally thing is, as Red often counsels us, and he writes about, Vinton County's uh, big uh, drive is to promote tourism. Yes. They believe that they're next door to the Hocking Hills, and they can capitalize, Absolutely. and they just need to get people to drive 10 or 15 miles further. So you got to have a reason to come. That's not only attractions, but that's events. That's where the Southern Ohio Forest Rally comes in. Red told me, and he's worked in Vinton County uh, for 20-some years. He said the crowd he saw in MacArthur when, you know, they did, and they had the cars and the racers downtown, he didn't recognize a lot of people. Hmm. So he thought it was a lot of visitors coming in nice. from out of town. Well, what do they do when they come in from out of town? Well, let's see. Well, they eat, they shop, they, they, eat, they shop, spend they money. Might, they might have to gas up their car. Yep. They might see some of these uh little shops along the way right. uh, that are interesting. They'll stop and patronize them uh, at the convenience stores. You know, they might, might, might get a few things that they need just like you do when you travel, when you're out and about and you need 100%. things. So, and, and you know, when people are out, you know, they're looking to have a good time. They'll spend some money. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is, that is a guiding, that is a guiding philosophy and drive of some of the public officials in Benton County. Uh, particularly the Benton County CVB. That's what the Hotel MacArthur development mm -hmm. is all about and the things that they're trying to do with the Park District. And one of the continuing things they're trying to do up at Zaleski, this would seem so simple. This seems like somebody ought to invest in it. There's really not a, a, a nice gas station and convenience store mm -hmm. in Zaleski. Well, Agreed. Zaleski is just a mile or two away from Lake Hope State Park where they say this, and I'm not going to doubt them, one million people a year visit. That doesn't one surprise me. A million. A million. Right. So it looks like that there is a lot of potential there. Yes. All right. Okay, we're going to go from uh, roaring race cars to tornadoes. All right. We told Still you, roaring. We told you on this show, and we try to tell the truth, even though sometimes unintentionally we don't, <laughs> that the local counties dodged the tornado threat. Remember the, yes. on last Wednesday night? Yeah. And it was true. I was told by the Vinton County Sheriff's Office, hey, we had some high winds up around Zaleski, some trees. Haven't heard anything about property damage. Well, now the National Weather Service out of Wilmington said, uh, confirmed a tornado in Hawking County that night, Wednesday evening, and they said it crossed into Vinton County. Uh -huh. So that would be on the northwest side of Vinton County. Still have not received any local reports about this. However, the Weather Service out of Wilmington has confirmed it. However... Vinton County is right on the line of, of whether it's served by the Wilmington National Weather Service Office or the Charleston, West Virginia uh, Service Office, mm -hmm. Weather Service Office. And they said that Charleston, West Virginia was investigating the report of the tornado in Vinton County, which they believe there was, by the way. It was okay. just trying to get pinned down the particulars, you know, the winds and was there any property damage or, or did anybody see anything nothing has been posted well and yet. that's the whole thing is obviously um you know if there was severe damage somebody would have mentioned it you know oh my barn's gone now so. right no you would think you would think <laughs> but the uh, tornado according to the uh wilmington office wilmington ohio office of the national weather service did pass into vinton county indeed Hmm. on that Wednesday evening in question. Good now, no yesterday, remember, we had those weather alerts, too. You may have been up in Columbus, but we, yeah, we had we some weather alerts down last here. Night, so. uh, we had a very scary weather alert here in Jackson and Vinton counties talking about possibly high winds, uh, well over 50 miles per hour. Oh, my. Large hail expected, golf ball size hail. We waited for it here in Jackson, and it never occurred. Okay. Now, supposedly, it was worse to our north. And... 
you know, I, when I went to the weather service Facebook this morning to see about, you know, the tornado that uh, supposedly occurred Wednesday in Vinton County, they are asking for individual information, information from individuals, anybody who might have experienced high winds because of a severe thunderstorm that occurred in Vinton County and Meigs County between 3.30 and 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Okay. So while we had black skies and alerts on our phones, they had the real thing in Vinton and, and Vinton and Meigs counties. However, once again, we have received no reports of, of any major damage or whatever, but there was for sure a severe thunderstorm enough that the weather service is even looking into it and looking for uh, local reports from residences and, and anyone wow. else who may have witnessed something. So if you did, call the National Weather Service in Charleston, West Virginia. They want to know. We and, didn't get, yeah, we ran into zero rain yesterday, so, or any kind of crazy weather. So right. that's, isn't that wild? It is. It of is. Of course, I will say I was at the brewery the other day and it looked like it was going to rain. And I got down to, um, like, where fa- the shake shop or Fantastic Sam's <clears throat> is now. And mm-hmm. it, the gra- there was standing water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, how. There was no rain here, and there's. It's obviously poured right here. That's so strange. Mm. It's. I don't understand how that happens, but anyway. It is. It is hard to understand. Hard to understand. <laughs> Meanwhile, the COVID cases continue to quietly increase. Now, Pete <coughs> in Jackson, haven't we had a talk about this? Well, uh, I'm just telling you. He, he, the good news is, uh, you know, there doesn't. Uh, I think life seems to be going on completely as normal. Am I yeah. wrong on that? No, I'm well, what much. do you what do you see? One in one in every one hundred people might have a mask on. Mm-hmm. Less than that, I think. Probably. And, and and you see that usually in a place where you have a crowd, mm-hmm. where some people are still being very careful. Yeah. Grocery or, or, may, or, like- or maybe you know they feel like they're they may be ill or something like that. Mm-hmm. They're trying to protect everybody else. But the the numbers say. In the last report released <clears throat> earlier, uh, early last week by the Jackson County Health Department, they were reporting 83 new cases in the period from May 10 to May 22. Uh, by comparison, in the two weeks before that, there was 53 new cases reported, oh. from 53 to 83. In Vinton County, from one week, uh, two weeks ago to last week, and went from 11 active cases to 17 active cases not okay. nearly as many but still still increasing still more right so we will continue to watch that because we are who we are have you heard um any discussion from the health department or any you know medical officials that have said um you know are people getting as sick as they did previously or is there you know any any difference in symptoms or anything like that um as we've gone further into this pandemic well, I talked to Kevin Aston, uh, not officially, but, you know, I just ran into him. And obviously that's something you ask when you run yeah, into him. Yeah, I, I was uh, just wondering. He is the Jackson County Health Commissioner, of right. course. He said, yes, there are an increase in cases. However, it is also true they are all turning out to be very mild. Okay, that's or good. Or maybe even asymptomatic. I'm guessing the asymptomatics may not even be counted because, you know, people are not kind of like tune into it or alerted to it or, yeah. or, you know, am I sick and what do I have? You know, I don't think people are thinking quite that way now. You mm. know, we're kind of, kind of numb to it. Almost. Right. <laughs> well, that, or we would just want to live in blissful ignorance. <laughs> right. You know, especially. I don't want to know whether I have it or not. Just Right. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, two things to think about as we go into another week where we do have some public meetings. In Jackson, uh, one of the uh, issues that's being discussed is cemetery decorations. And in Wellston, it's cats. I think I need to go to the restroom. Can we just go ahead, Pete? But there was, <laughs> at the last Jackson City Council meeting. I have a meeting to go to. Wait, <laughs> what, how, how do I get out of this? Uh, well, we have to go to the <laughs> meetings. But the, the truth is, I mean, if you're interested in what's going on in your I'm city. I'm just kidding. And you want to have one of the frustrating things that, that all the city officials say or the county officials, or whoever running these local governments, you know, people respond and they don't like what you do or they, they don't do, but when the meetings come or, or they even have some public thing where they're inviting public input, two, three people show up, you know. Well, so, it's because everyone wants to complain but not be part of the solution. Right, exactly. But anyway, uh, in Jackson, uh, for more than a year, there's been a dialogue about cemetery decorations. And the skinny 
is that there have been rules on the books for years. They go yeah. way back on what you can do and not do when you decorate your grave. Well, they've never really been enforced, all right, for whatever reason. This right. is through more than one administration. Last year, uh, a, a councilwoman noticed that it seemed like that the decorations she thought were getting out of hand. She asked the service director, David Swackhammer, is this causing a problem in the cemetery for the mowers and the weed eaters? She said, heck yes, it is. And then he did a little survey of himself, and he thought there were well over 100 violations by the books mm -hmm. in Fairmont Cemetery, the city's sprawling cemetery there uh, at the end of town. And so council decided, well, hey, we got these rules. We got to enforce them. Well, obviously, if you have a loved one buried in Fairmont Cemetery and you've been allowed to do this with a grave, have this decoration, have a bench or whatever. Sure. You're not going to like all of a sudden being told you can't do that anymore. Right. The city got to the end of the year where they were going to start enforcing and they decided to punt. They said, let's sleep on this because, you know, the mowing season is over. We'll address this in the spring or yeah. next year before the mowing season starts. Well, we're well into the mowing season. They had an ordinance that called for uh, basically a lot of the same restrictions. Some changes were made, but they were ready to pass that at the last council meeting. That was May the 23rd. They ended up, had a long discussion, had two other people in there to once again complain. Uh, from the public who own lots who okay. say let us decorate our lots it's not fair to tell us we can't decorate them after you've allowed us to decorate it for 10 years and over there they're decorating why can't i decorate so you know that's kind of along the line so i know so this is a no-win situation so, so uh councilman ryan peters of the first ward said he came up with the idea of doing a waiver meaning that um lot owners if council would go along with this Lot owners who had this waiver would take care of their own lots. Mm -hmm. Now, the question that wasn't fully answered at the time, at least, was what would this allow you to do as far as decorations? Would you have a different set of rules? That's what Mayor Randy Evans and David Swackhammer said. Hey, council, it's up to you to make the rules. We'll enforce it. But we want to know what exactly they're going to be. Right. So what they ended up doing was tabling the ordinance they were about ready to pass. And they didn't do a waiver. They didn't do that yet because they got to figure out the specifics of it but they're going to start all over. And so that may come up at tonight's Jackson oh, City Council meeting. That's going to be rough. Right. But but one of the but things... But a lot of people do take care in, in true fairness, in all fairness, mm -hmm. they, they do take care of their own it, well, and you know, it relatives. Mean, it obviously means a lot to them, and it's an emotional mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. And Ryan Peters brought up the thing that if they do a waiver and they have rules, whether they're exactly like they were before, uh, let's not make them retroactive you know, let's not punish somebody because we didn't enforce it before and make them mm -hmm. do something different or remove something. Mm -hmm. And so that is another aspect too, because, you know, is that treating people differently, past and present? And do they enforce the old rules? If they keep the old rules, do they enforce them from the time that they become effective or do they go back a ways? This and is how why far? we're not on council, Pete. Right. We yeah. don't <laughs> have to make decisions like this. Okay. okay. It's not a high pain deal either. No. All right. That's, but that's any, anyway, that's the debate in Jackson. And then we talked about this uh, last week. Uh, I think <clears throat> Jeremiah was here because he covered that meeting the last mm -hmm. meeting about the stray cats in Wellston. You know, they went around the bend on that, uh, went around the circle, lots of issues, pro and con. And of course, it's a problem because cats are, oh, made, yeah. are, are run free. I mean, that's just the way it is. Cats and dogs are cats not are the cats. same. But, you know, on the books, once again, they have these ordinances where you got to control cats or the cats must be on a leash. I'm not exactly sure what they are in Wellston, but I'm sure by the letter of the law, you're not supposed to let your cat run free. Do you keep your Wellston. cat on a leash, Pete? I do not. But <laughs> but it, it it's free. It roams free inside 253 West South Street. James, do you keep your cat on a leash? He keeps me on a leash. Yeah, I know. That m much more... But anyway, they had a, bit, a nice discussion on this. And, and you know, it's kind of like the cemetery decorations. It's not an easy one to no, resolve. There's no They've had the same discussion answer. in Jackson uh, before, mm -hmm. too. But in Wellston, they're going to have another health and safety committee meeting at 6 o'clock prior to the regular Wellston City Council meeting this Thursday evening at the Wellston City Building. That is the time where you can come and weigh in on the cat issue. Okay. You know, what do you do? They had all sorts of ideas. The Humane Society uh, uh, wants a, a policy of, hey, let's trap the stray cats, yep. we'll neuter the stray cats, and release the stray cats, yep. and they won't be making new cats. You know that, Correct. But this is something that will take volunteer time. There will be some expense involved. 
and it will take time. Mm -hmm. So uh, that issue, you know, may be addressed. We will be addressed for sure at the committee meeting of the Health and Safety Committee prior to the Wellston City Council meeting. Mayor Charlie Hudson knows that it's a concern. Uh, he's willing to listen to possible solutions and scenarios. But, uh, you know, like Mayor Randy Evans, I think he's more worried about the problems of infrastructure and those kind of issues to, you know, to make the town better, mm -hmm. uh, to fix important things like sure. water lines and sewer lines and, and so forth. I know. It's just like where in the line does that come, fall? Right. And in the village of Oak Hill, uh, of course, they have uh, money from the Neighborhood Revitalization Grant yeah. to pave the street, but they have also some of the village's own money to pave streets. And we want to tell you that they will be doing that this summer. Uh, the council at its most recent meeting uh, accepted a bid of $159,400 to McKee Paving uh, to do the bids. Uh, and uh, as a result, these streets or sections of streets will be paved. Bowman, Bingham, Charlotte, East Cross, Glen Cove, North, Norman, Plum, and Reed Streets. <clears throat> so motors will be inconvenienced a little bit in Oak Hill, but for a good reason. They're going to have uh, paved streets. On the meetings front, <coughs> the Wellston City Board of Education will be meeting tonight at 730. The Jackson City Board of Education normally meets the second Tuesday, but they have rescheduled their meeting for the 28th. Okay, I'm going to bring in <laughs> Jeremiah Shaver now to talk about the car show while I get a drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> Someone <laughs> save Pete. We're saving you, Pete. Thanks not only you. do we not want to talk about <laughs> cats, this is his way of getting out of the cat thing. There you go. <laughs> I was going to go get him a cup of water there. He started getting choked up. <laughs> well, All Jeremiah, right. welcome. You, um, wow, you had an eventful <sighs> evening and, yeah. and morning. And then, um, like, when you showed up, uh, like, how did you get the word about the, the, crash. the crash last night? So, so I sat it out on the front porch. Little guy had him in the swing. I was swinging him. Heard a bunch of sirens. I live outside the city. Okay. So I turned on my scanner app and listen, and sometimes I'll catch scanner traffic, and I happened to catch the uh, Jackson Fire Department being dispatched to the uh -huh. scene. And so I yelled for the wife, hey, come watch the little guy so I can run to the scene here. Because I'm so, not sure what's going on. Was it, I mean, it had to have been, you had to have pulled up and been like, what yeah, is going yeah. on? Yeah, I parked I parked uh, down the street in that uh, church lot there. I walked down, and Look as I... That. uh as I got down closer, I was like, man, this is this is a big deal. They, it, it was closed. That section of the roadway was closed for a good period of time because they had to wait. It was a long while. Yeah, they had to wait for Columbia Gas to get there to uh -huh. check the utilities because yes. there's utilities where they where he clipped that side of the building over there yes. that you pointed out when yes. I was there this morning. Um, there's uh, there's gas along through there. So I think they had to come and check that to make sure you know, get that it turned off and everything. Sense. Yeah. Yeah, but pretty pretty crazy uh, Sunday evening. I mean, that's little old you Jackson, don't, Ohio. Yeah, I know it's something you don't see that that often. You know. Yeah. Well, so. it sounds like I mean, as as horrific as as that crash was, uh, it had the best outcome possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely turned out really good. Yep. Um. So a couple things uh, I cover over the weekend. Yeah. I was out at the uh, ANA <laughs> truck stop. For our uh, Humane Society of Jackson County for that cause for Paul's. It was their second annual car show. Yes. This year actually had some semi-decent weather, yeah. unlike last year where it snowed. Yeah. No, that she, they <laughs> were the telling me that. At the end of May. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they said it wasn't wasn't very pleasant weather last year. No, it was horrible. Yeah. People still brought their cars out last they year, did. they said. They, um, they had it a little over 30 last year. Uh, this year, they said they had 48. Great. All together. And uh, I was out there uh, in the afternoon, and we got photos of the top three, which you had your top dog, Cat's Meow, Pick of the Litter, and then they did a favorite 32. So out of the 48 cars, there was 32 chosen, and they got a trophy, too. Okay. So I did a little uh, quick video. It's not very long. Um, kind of showing the car show, and it shows you the winners with their cars. Awesome. Well, thank so, you for doing that. Yep. The second annual Calls for Paul's Car Show, which benefited the Humane Society of Jackson County, was held at the a, a Truck Stop over the weekend. A total of 48 cars were registered for this year's event. They had um, several awards, including the top three, which was the top dog, cat's meow, pick of the litter, and the favorite 32. There was food, music, raffles, and uh, all vehicles were welcome.
John Maxwell is pictured with his 1965 Chevy Impala. He earned the title of Top Dog during this year's car show. A Mr. Tom Davis is shown with his 1970 Chevy Chalet. Uh, he earned the title of Cat's Meow during this year's show. And finally, a Stanley Hook with his 1968 Chevy Camaro SS. He won pick of the litter. That's awesome. It was a really nice that. event. It and, looks like uh, they had a beautiful day for it. It too. was. The weather was nice. Um, I, there was a good crowd out there, it seemed like. And uh, they were. I think they were really pleased with it. Um, yeah. I'd mentioned uh, Diana and them. I was like, make sure you pick up the telegram because you're on the front page. Uh-huh. They're like, what do we do? <laughs> oh, no. Is it a mug shot uh, or is yeah. it a good thing? No. I, I, I just mentioned to them that they were on there so they could read you know, about yeah. uh, what I reported on the stray cat deal there in Wellston that Pete was talking about. But um, So also uh, on Friday, um, before we started the weekend, we was down in Jackson's Manpower Park. Uh, Jackson High School's Gay Straight Alliance held a Pride at the Park event. Yes. Ju- June is uh, Pride Month. Uh-huh. And uh, this uh, club or group um, came together and they held an event down there. Everybody seemed like they were having a really nice time mm-hmm. and there was a good crowd. And uh, we interviewed um, one of the members from the club along with the advisor. And we Wonderful. have a video on that as well. I love that so much. Members of Jackson High School's Gay Straight Alliance came together for an event in Jackson's Manpower Park on Friday, June 10th. The event, dubbed Pride at the Park, was open to absolutely everyone, LGBTQ, and their allies alike. Hi, I'm Alexis Bragg, and I'm an executive member of the Jackson High School GSA, which serves to create a better environment for LGBTQ youth and their allies within our school. One of our main purposes in the community is to encourage acceptance and to educate the community and plan various events to generate both acceptance and knowledge. So today we're celebrating Pride at the Park and this is an event where we have come together and shown acceptance for LGBTQ and the LGBTQ like community in our, in our community. We have lots of activities here for everybody to do. We have a table where they can write down their names and their pronouns. We have vendors, we have various resource booths where they can learn about safe churches in our area or different programs where they are welcome and encouraged to come and be themselves. That's kind of just the environment we want to form at the Pride at the Park today. We just want to create a environment of happiness, acceptance, where people can come and feel free to be who they are and just embrace every single part of their identity. Hi, my name is Betty Miller, and I'm here at Pride Pride in the Park with the JHS GSA. This is the second Pride in the Park that the GSA has hosted. Our JHS GSA has been around for, this is its third year, um, and it came about uh, um, about three years ago. A student had approached administration and asked them, Uh, about organizing uh, a GSA club, a Gay Straight Alliance, and um, they had asked me if I would advise it. And of course, I openly embraced that idea because, you know, one of the things I think is so important is that students know that they have a safe space at not just the high school, but in the community. And um, it has done wonders for Um, our LGBTQ youth population at the high school and to see the community come out in such full force supporting um, not just these young people but all LGBTQ people is really refreshing especially when we have seen so many attacks on um, LGBTQ folks in the media um, around the nation so I think this is really helpful to them you know um, one in four LGBTQ youth um, suffer from um, mental health disorders or, or have experienced bullying. And if just one supportive adult steps up to, to a youth, um, it changes the trajectory of their life. So um, I think for them to see all of this support is pretty amazing. And for, you know, we are a, a nonprofit, a volunteer club, um, the GSA Executive Committee. Um, does all of this on their own and for young people to take that kind of of responsibility and accountability 
um, to send this message of awareness, I, I think is, is pretty awesome for, for this community and for our school. All right. What a fun event. And it was, you know, I, I love the, um, point of that club, which is inclusion. And it's, it's, you know, a place where kids can just go and feel safe and like learn about each other and just learn that, you know, can't we all just love each other for right. who we are? Like, right. what does it matter one way or the other? Like, and I just love what they're doing with that. And it's so neat that they have that um, opportunity in high school which I think a lot of kids don't. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it was a really good event. It was well attended. We'll have uh, photos awesome. from it along with the car show. We'll do a, a story on both. So look for coverage on that. And uh, shout out to James for uh, taking the photos for me and uh, let me borrow his mics to do that because I forgot mine. So. <laughs> You're welcome. All hey, right. it's all see, it's all working together. Yeah, all working together. <laughs> so I'll uh, get my chair here back to Mr. Wilson and... Oh, Hopefully I think he he's got some water. Got some water now. And he has color back in his face. He's good. He's still got a stack of news to get through. And he's got 15 minutes. That's so. right. We'll talk. I'll fast, move out of the way. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremiah. Thank I know a lot of. Uh, he's <laughs> been out and about all weekend doing stuff. So. All right. You know, w once again, and we're not through yet, Jennifer. But just where we've been so far, anybody who says nothing happens around Jackson Vinton County, uh, I mean, they're just wrong. They've I, lost I, their minds. I, yeah, I like to be. Uh, I like to be open-minded about this, but anyone who says that, you just shake your head. As Carmen says, they have bumped their heads. Right, exactly. And uh, just diverse, the number of things that are going on. Yes. Oh, but anyway, on the business side, we're going to go to business now. Uh, we had a ribbon-cutting event Friday afternoon at Path Be Behavioral Healthcare in Jackson. Okay. That's at 336 Main Street, uh, just about across the street from the Elks Lodge, uh, and... It actually has been there for several years, but uh, not long after they started operating at that location, uh, COVID came along, and that changed a lot of things. They couldn't sure. operate the way they wanted to. They certainly didn't celebrate with something like a ribbon cutting or open house no. or whatever. And so they belatedly did that on Friday afternoon. The Jackson Area Chamber of Commerce was there. Jackson Mayor Randy Evans was there. But Path Behavioral Healthcare... Uh, is offers local clients a full range of outpatient mental health services such as counseling, case management, medication management, and much more. Uh, they say the passionate professionals there serve visitors and referrals as young as four-year-olds all the way to adults dealing with a wide range of adverse mental issues. And a lot more uh, publicity lately. Uh, I think a lot of gains uh, in our uh, in our community and throughout the country on mental health yeah, issues. Yeah, for sure. And um, just getting it out there and discussing. And right, exactly. Acknowledging and, and, it. And and uh, it, it's a two-sided thing. It's the public understanding it. It's the services being out there that can help people who have mental health issues. And it's people who have mental health issues being willing to come forward and, and, and seek help. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, they may feel ashamed. They may mm -hmm. think that something's wrong with them. Uh, you know, you get a cold. You're alone. You, you get a cold, you're sick, right? And you know that's not your fault. Well, if you have mental health issues, that's not your fault either. Correct. But you just need to be able to do something about it. And Path Behavioral Healthcare now offers some of those services where you can get them right here uh, in downtown Jackson. That's wonderful. So uh, a nice event there. Uh, Alex Shope who does some of our business stories for him, always does a super job of uh, talking to the people involved and taking photos and so forth. He did the coverage, and we will be uh, we will be seeing a, a story with photos uh, in an upcoming issue of the Telegram. And, of course, on our website, too, thetelegramnews.com. All right, new business also that we want to tell you about in Hamden. Uh, Red Thompson sniffed out a new pizza shop in Hamden. Can you believe you that? You mean Red found some new food? He found oh, Poppy's, right. Poppy's Family Pizza, and there it is. Isn't that a nice sign out there in front? Uh, Poppy's Family Pizza uh, is located uh, in the village of Hamden, right there on the main drag. And uh, the owners, there they are, Carissa and George Gonzalez. And they have some uh, restaurant experience in their past. 
And their new restaurant, which opened, uh, I believe Memorial Day might have been its okay. opening day. They wanted to be open because people were out for the parade and the Memorial Day ceremony there. Uh, but they uh, have a menu in addition to pizza, calzones, fried chicken wings, salads, appetizers, uh, individual pizza products, uh, lots of beverages as well there. Uh, it is currently open Tuesday through Sunday from noon to midnight. It's closed on Monday. Uh, on most Mondays, at least. Uh, they also, uh, on their indoor dining, they're going to have a big screen in there for the sports fans so they can eat their pizza and watch the ball games. You can also uh, place your order uh, by phone and online as well. Um, there is a 5% discount for online orders, so a little bit bonus if you go that way. They do accept uh, credit cards, and they also are willing to do large orders, you know, if, if you have for a group or whatever. Sure. So uh, Love that. that's Poppy's Family Pizza. It is beside the Hamden Post Office building okay. uh, is your landmark to go by. Gotta love pizza. All right. There's always room for another lawyer and another pizza shop, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of some of the wide uh, array of events that's been taking place the last several days, myself and James Hamilton, who is a board member of the Southern Hills Arts Council, yes. were at the opening the opening. Uh, night reception Thursday evening of the latest exhibit in the gallery at the Marquet Culture Arts Center at 269 East Main Street in downtown Jackson. This is a double header this time. We have two artists. One is Sean Gentry, who is the Jackson High School art teacher in his professional yeah. life. I like his shirt. He has, uh, he it's has, very flowery. Um, he's been to Hawaii or someplace. <laughs> he does 3D, he does 3D art, and there you can see one of the big examples of it. Look how intricate that detail is there. Yeah. So uh, he comes by being an art instructor naturally. He not only teaches that he can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so he has about 18 pieces there. And there are our own, uh, our own Brittany. Brittany Potter yes. has 19 exhibits. There she is smiling, and she should be between two of her uh, enhanced photograph uh, pieces of artwork. And she takes photography, enhances it, and her subject was mythology. Yes. And the interesting thing about it is a lot of people, you know, uh, have heard about mythology but haven't studied it or whatever. But it's very interesting. It and is. some of the pictures that she took of mythological characters, she used real subjects here in town. Uh, Matt Wilson, I know the That's president right. of, of Shaq, right. was was uh, was in one of those pictures. Our own Courtney Leach posed yes. for one of those pictures too. So anybody who doesn't think that Courtney Leach is a goddess, you know, yeah, we have, well, we have pictorial proof. We definitely now do. at the Marque Cultural Arts Center. So this uh, exhibit is now on display uh, at events whenever the Marque is open, mm -hmm. and uh, as always, it is one hundred percent free. Yes, to go to. And uh, 37 total pieces of art there. I believe they're all for sale this time, too. So a chance to uh, get a, uh, a interesting, provocative piece uh, for your wall or your office or your bedroom or whatever. Absolutely. So very interesting, uh, both, both exhibits. Yep. All right. Uh, of course, I assigned myself to go to the Limerick <laughs> Strawberry Festival on Saturday. You, did you have to fight Red over that one? No, I didn't have to fight okay. Red because I sent him up to see the race cars. Okay. And I think he might have stopped up off at Poppy's Pizza on the way, maybe, on top of that. But anyway, that's why. the Limerick Strawberry Festival, let me tell you, $8 meal. I got takeout, but listen oh, to this. Oh, man. Chicken, chicken and noodles, mashed potatoes, green beans, coleslaw, beverage, strawberry shortcake with whipped cream and ice cream for dessert. Oh, man. Right. Pete. right. Those ladies really had it. It supports the Limerick Grange out there. It was on Savageville Road. Uh, you drive about eight miles out of town. You take a left on Savageville uh, Road, go another three miles, and you run right into this historic Grange building that has been there for almost 100 years, I'm guessing. Yeah. But it used to be uh, you know, the son. It used to be the sons of Union of Union War veterans, that's where, and then it turned into a Grange Hall, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just been there forever. They had uh, a nice uh, thing set up to where you could eat in, but a lot of people also took it home as well. Uh, they will have even a better known uh, event coming up in August, usually the third Saturday in August. I didn't get a confirmation on that date, but that's about when they have it, mid-August. It is the Limerick Bean Dinner 
and it has been going on for about 120 years. Spent many a day out there with my grandmother and Uncle Lewis, and I remember distinctly that's where I learned to play pickup sticks. Okay. At All the right. Limerick Grange well, it's, as a it, child. It's a, it, it, is, <laughs> it is like Norman Rockwell, the scene out there. Yeah. <laughs> the is. old Grange Hall, uh, the, the picnic grove where you can sit and yep. watch, and then they got the bean pot off the side where they cook the beans and Pretty so forth. Stuff. One of my favorite things. And it's always well attended for being, you know, a little township thing. Uh, uh, I don't know whether they still do. I'm, I'm not surprised if they do. But a lot of the politicians who are running for office, they never missed the Limerick Bean oh, Dinner. Oh, no. And it was a ritual. You went to the Limerick Bean Dinner. You know, you did your hobnobbing. And then you washed the dishes. You helped them wash the dishes to show you were a good guy or a good girl. Oh, gotcha. All right. It's summer. And that means that uh, the summer food programs are underway. Yes. And there's lots of places to go in both Jackson and Vinton counties where your child can get a free meal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's you don't have to go through an application process. You can just show up at these places. Um, we have the, it's, the, the lists are too lengthy uh, to talk about here on TV, Jennifer, with our time running out. But we do have them posted free of charge on our website and on our Facebook. Oh, okay. But there are places in Wellston, in Jackson, in Oak Hill. Uh, and also in Benton County as well. And once again, these are open to the general public and totally free. And, you know, the idea from the government the high, or the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the agencies below them, uh, federal, state, local, that run these programs is that, you know, uh, a lot of parents work, single parents or whatever. Uh, the school gives them lunch during the school year uh, or they buy lunch or they get it mm -hmm. free or reduced price. Well, what about the summer? Right. Parents are still working. And so yeah. it's a good social opportunity as well. Sure. All right. So those programs are underway. Once again, you can check our website, thetelegramnews.com or the Telegram Facebook page and see those lists and times. Uh, okay. On the travel side, uh, the Jackson County Engineer's Office and Melissa Miller wants to let us know that starting today, a section of Mulga Road, that is County Road 39, between the city of Wellston and State Route 32, a lot of people mm -hmm. maybe go that way in and out of Wellston. Uh, it will be closed periodically during work days, starting today uh, for pipe replacement work. They have six different pipes they have to replace on Mulga Road. And this will only take place Monday through Thursday during the weekdays from 7 a.m. to 4. So, you know, if you're driving during those times, Monday through Thursday, uh, the road may be closed for short periods of time. It will be open before 7 a.m. and in the evenings and on the weekends. But just you may want to avoid okay. that road that time if you have another way to connect with the highway or wherever you're going. Sure. All right. So what else do we have to tell you? We, I want to salute the Jackson Lions Club and in particular one of their members, Kathy Garvey. Uh, the Lions Club did that veal sale not too long ago yes. at the Farmer Sportsman booth uh, here in Jackson. And they were able to raise money for their community care closet project that provides needed clothing and accessories uh, for children in need. The club will also be funding a um, uh, will also be funding clothing, diapers, and supplies for the very youngest children. So they have these veal sales, and you know they volunteer their time, and they use the money to help other people. I mean that's the way our service clubs are, and that's what the Lions Club did. Uh, with that veal sale held at the Farmer Sportsman. But also, they did announce, too, that they had their end-of-year uh, picnic that they always have the Lions Club because their organization years are usually, I think, July to, to June. Mm -hmm. And they honored Kathy Garvey with the Melvin Jones Award. That is the highest award a Lions Club member can have. Wow. And uh, Kathy has received, Kathy in, not only has been a great Lions Club member, she's been the president, the secretary, about every office that you can imagine, but she's also a Girl Scout leader. She's one of the leaders of the Friends of Buckeye Furnace, and she's just an all-around good person. Yes. I know from doing my job that there's, uh, there's uh, not anybody who's more service-oriented than Kathy Garvey, and she's always, right. to, she's always looking to help those who need it the most. All right, on the sports side, uh, if you want to check out, if you haven't seen our Saturday paper, uh, just because you know all the high school sports is over, that doesn't mean that we don't find ways to cover the high school sports or high school sports-related stories even in the summer. Mm -hmm. All right, Todd Compston did a uh, 
a uh, feature story on Traylon Davis. He, of course, is the Jackson High School graduate who, there he is, catching a pass in uh, Mountaineer gear, in the Mountaineer uniform. He is, will be a second-year tight end at the University of West Virginia. He did get some playing time, but not enough to lose his red shirt. Oh. So he will be a red shirt freshman nice. going into this year with all four years of eligibility. And uh, he sat down. Uh, oh, he didn't sit down with him. He was on the phone. But he <laughs> talked in depth with Todd sure. Thompson about, you know, looking ahead to this year. They have a new head coach at West Virginia. They have a new offensive coordinator. They have a new quarterback. Uh, they're always a good team, but, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, interest and enthusiasm uh, for a kind of a new start there. And uh, he's hoping, to, obviously, to get more playing time there, but he's ready yeah. to do whatever needs done. That Love is Traylon that. Davis, who is the son of Eric and Katrina Davis. Eric Davis, of course, uh, graduated in, I uh, believe, in, uh, 19, in 1998, and Eric uh, was one of the best high school lineman that I've ever seen mm -hmm. come through Jackson High School. His son is a great blocker, too, but he also pa catches passes as a uh -huh. tight end. All right. Also, you know, that Denton County girls basketball team that was so good for all those years. There was four seniors that yeah. were great that graduated. They were uh, one of the nucleus of that team a year ago that went to the state tournament. Well, their point guard, Tegan Bartow, uh, we did a story on her, and there she is right in the middle uh, flanked by her head, her, her new head coach, Brent Jones, and uh, David Smalley, the head coach at the University of Rye Grand. Tegan is going to go and continue to educate herself at the University of Rye Grand, but she's going to keep bouncing basketball. Nice. Too. And so congratulations to Tegan Bartow. Awesome. Congratulations to Traylon Davis as well as they continue uh, you know, their athletic and academic careers at the collegiate level. Love so that. you can see those stories uh, on our website uh, and, and also in last Saturday's print edition. Very good. So there we are. All right. Well, thank you, Pete. You're welcome. As always, Pete Wilson uh, to do our morning news update, full of it, and we love it. And thanks to Jeremiah for um, doing some of the extras out and about, uh, both last night and this morning. <laughs> and, of course, thank you to James for pushing all the right buttons. James, how did your film festival go? We'll, we can talk about that. But. Uh, it was great. Uh, maybe we can talk about it a little bit more later in the week when we've got a bit more time. But, yeah, it was Love really, that. really great. Really great turnout. Really, really fun time. Can we show your your thing? Uh, maybe. What's the thing? His movie. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it may be a bit much for Main Street TV, but we can. I don't think so. Okay. I think it's cute. All right. Yeah. There are no so. censors here at Main Street no, TV. I mean, we're not Do we dealing... have censors? I don't think so. Okay. If we did, we wouldn't be here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, have a wonderful day. Listen, 90 some degrees basically all week. It's going to be, it's county fair weather. I woke up this morning. I'm like, oh, it feels like the county fair. It's super humid, super hot, so please check on your friends, your neighbors, your pets, your loved ones. If they don't have air conditioning, make sure your pets have lots and lots of fresh water and um, because it gets really, really uncomfortable. So. It does. All right. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you right back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching.